All right then, so now we've got some of the basics out of the way, I want to start to move on to page layout and how Bootstrap helps us with that. To begin with, we're going to look at containers. Now containers are the most basic layout feature that Bootstrap has to offer, and you're going to find yourself using them quite often to wrap your page content. They apply padding around the content, they give it a max width dependent on the device or browser width, and they can also center your content on the page in a central column as well. They're also required when you're using the Bootstrap grid system, which we're going to look at later on. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see all the different container classes that we can use and the widths of the containers at the different bootstrap breakpoints. So, for example, using the most basic container class, we can see the widths of the container at all of these different screen sizes. For extra small screens like mobiles, it's 100% width. As the screen sizes get larger, the width of the container gets bigger too. The same is true for the other variations. The only difference is that the container remains at 100% width for longer as screen sizes get bigger. For example, the container LG class maintains 100% screen width until the large breakpoint, at which point it gets a series of different max widths as the screen size increases. So let's give some of these a whirl in our code. Okay, so let's create a container. I'm going to have a div with a class of container, but also a class of my-5 to give this some margin in the y direction. And inside the container, I'm just going to do an h2 that says normal container. And then underneath the h2, I'll do a paragraph with some lorem ipsum, like so. So if we take a look at this now, we can see that this has a maximum width. It's not taking up the full width of the page over here. We have a big gap on the left and a big gap on the right. So it's centralized this bit of content into some kind of central column with a max width. Now, if we make this smaller, then at some point it's gonna click into a new central column in the center. You saw that then, right? At this point right here, the max width gets smaller at the breakpoints. And as we go down, it does the same thing until we get to a small size screen, at which point it just goes to 100% like that. Okay, so if we take a look at this inside the dev tools, let me grab this container. We can see that this has got a max width at the minute of 960 pixels. And if we hover over that, we can see over there on the left, it's 960 pixels. So that's the basic container. And when we scoot it down, that max width changes to 720 pixels in this case, etc. So that's the container, right? But I said we had these other kinds of containers that we can apply different classes to, to say they should be 100% width up to a certain screen width, and then they start to go to these different max widths. So let's give a few of those a try. So I'm going to say div.container again, and this time it's going to be container hyphen fluid. So this container fluid thing right here, this is always 100% of the device or browser width, and we'll see that h2 fluid container um let me kind of spell this no container and then paragraph lorem 30 save that and preview and we can see now let me get that off this is always 100 percent of the width right so as we scoot forward it doesn't click into new max widths it's just always 100 percent width so that's a fluid container now let's try something else going to come down here and do another div with a class of container and this time it's going to have LG applied to it and also MY-5 to give it some margin. So H2 and we'll say 100% width until LG screens then it becomes a container with different max widths. Let's do a paragraph down here so we'll say P and then lorem 30 and tab Save that and preview. So it's 100% width. If we start from the bottom right here, notice this bottom one. It's 100% width at the moment. It still is. So not like this one at the top where it's jumped into a max width. It's still 100% width at this point. We make it a little bigger, still 100% width. And when we reach a large screen at this point, then it jumps into a max width, the same as this top one. And now it's gonna behave the same way as the top one, all right? So that's the container LG. Let's do one more example. 
I'm going to come down here and say div.container hyphen x l and also my hyphen five and then inside here an h2 that says 100 percent width until extra large screens then container max widths so let's do a paragraph tag as well lorem 30 and save this and if we preview now from mobiles first so 100 percent width yeah the bottom one the same as the rest if we scroll outwards or rather make it bigger then it's still 100% width now this one right here is jumped into a central column at the large breakpoint but this one is still 100% width until the next breakpoint right here and then it jumps into a container okay so that's containers my friends I'm going to be using them as we make our design in the future just to put our content into a central column on the page and so that it's not always 100% width